Hello, Ray. How you doing, Jim? Hey, it's good to have you here. Oh, it's my pleasure, believe me. Thanks for inviting me down to the session. Oh, well, I, I, I thought you might enjoy that and it sort of give you an idea of, of uh, you know, what I'm trying to do with, uh, with this little recording company that we have. Yeah, now this was with the Ray Letts, wasn't it? Right, and uh, uh, let's see, Tangerine Record Company, and we, we, we were trying to get something going, and of course, you know, the Ray Letts sing with me on everything right. I do, just, you know, when you, when you hear a hit, you can rest assured that the Ray Letts are there somewhere. Ray, let's go back in your career a bit. Uh, is it true you attained fame first as a popular entertainer and then a jazz artist? Uh, well, I, I, it, I wouldn't say pop popular. I, mm -hmm. I think I think uh, one it would be a little more accurate to say that uh, we started with rhythm and blues first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pardon me, uh, which you know sounds like uh, I got a woman and, and uh, drowning my own tears, which is supposed to be in the R and B field. Right. Uh, that's what we started with first, and and then uh, from there. We, we made an album, I, th I think uh, they call it the, the Great Ray Charles or something mm -hmm. like that. And we did some, um, uh, some modern uh, things, you know, on that, uh, like uh, doodling, you know, uh, uh, little, little ditties like, like that. Um. Uh, on the album, and then from there we went to the uh, when we changed and went over to ABC, mm -hmm. then we did this country western, just like you said in the beginning. Yeah. You, you were right. You know, I want to check it back uh, to the days of Seattle when you were gigging around. Uh, let me bring up a name, uh, Bumps Blackwell. Yeah, I yeah. know Bumps quite well. He's a friend of mine too, and uh, I was. Uh, uh, happy to read about Bumps in the back of one of your uh, album covers. Yeah, well, you know, he, uh, um, uh, well, uh, shortly after I got to Seattle, I, I, I met Bumps, and of course he, he had a, a band around town, and uh, uh, whenever it was possible, you know, he would uh, uh, bring me in to play along um, with him. Uh, he and Quincy Jones. We Quincy, all, we, yeah. Yeah, we, well, we were all, uh, uh, Quincy and I were kids at the time, you know, up in Seattle. And of course, this is really how Quincy and I met, too, through Bumps Blackwell. Mm -hmm. Ray, let's go back a bit to about May 28th, 1957. Swanee River Rock. Talk, right. talk about that river, huh? Yeah, that's right. Talk okay. about the river. Do you know way down, way down, way down up on the Swanee, Swanee. talking about the river, yeah, you know so far, so far, so far away, so far oh, away. Yeah. Do you know that's where, that's where where my heart is a turning, oh, yeah, and that's where, that's where, uh, that's uh, where the old folks stay. The old folks stay. I'm far from my folks back home This was uh, about the the third year or so uh, when I was with uh, uh, Atlantic that we did the Swanee River Rock. Before that, we we had uh, Food for You and Drowning My Own Tears, and and of course I got a woman, uh, which I now that is what I really think uh, uh, went very big for me. You know, was this uh, I got a woman thing. This this sort of opened up a lot of 
ears or eyes uh, to, to me that were not open before. And then, of course, after the Swanee River, you know, we had things like Yes, Indeed, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Ain't That Love. Well, we're going to get to some of those. <laughs> right. Right, you did a lot of, uh, well, they call it gospel along that time, uh, Hallelujah, I Love Her So, This Little right. Girl of Mine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's kind of natural for me, though, because, uh, you know, my, my parents were, were uh, very religious people. We were, you know, and I, so therefore I was reared in a Baptist church and went to, you know, all the re revival meetings and so forth. So, you know, it's something that sort of grows up with you, or you grew up with it either way, um, uh, it, it kind of sticks in you, and I think you, you, you can't really get away from it. You, you, you don't get too far away from your upbringing, I don't think. We're going to give a listen right now, Ray, to a tune you did in 58 called Yes Indeed. All right. All right? Crazy. Well, I know Yes indeed If it hits you Yes indeed You say Yes indeed Oh, yes you will now Yes indeed I want to tell you Yes indeed It's going to get you Yes indeed Yes indeed Yes indeed Oh, yeah Yes indeed You get a feeling Down in your soul Time you hear that good old rock and roll. I know you say oh. Ray Charles, yes indeed, the old Cy Oliver tune. Ray, how do you feel when people like uh, Peggy Lee, Bella Fani, Bobby Darin, Gloria Lynn, and Elvis cut some of your sides? Well, I, I, I must tell you, it, it's a joyous, very joyous feeling, and of course, uh, uh, quite gratifying, you know, uh, particularly when one stops to realize that, you know, it's a lot of entertainers out here, and... Uh, uh, and uh, the people which you named are all great in their own right, mm -hmm. and it's quite a, a tribute, I think. And so, therefore, y you know I'm quite thrilled about the whole affair. Hey, we're going to go back to uh, 1958 for this uh, Newport Jazz Festival. Now, was this the first time that uh, you played a jazz-type sound in front of a, a major audience? Uh, well, it, it, it was the first time we played a festival. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to say a major audience because, uh, to, to me, any time you get people uh, together uh, why, and, and you're able to, to um, uh, uh, put your goods on exhibition, mm -hmm. you know, oh. I, then uh, <laughs> I, I think this is, a, the, 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 I, I call that, of course, a major crowd because, uh, after all, these people do spend their money to come out and hear you. Uh, but I think this, uh, the question you mean is, is, was, is this the first thing we did uh, for, for some kind of festival, a big to-do uh -huh. like that, I have to agree with you. Was. Now, before this time, though, you were known primarily as an R&B performer. Right, before that. But I, I, I think what got me on that show uh, um, was, as I said, the album we did with this uh, the doodling in it, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and I, if, if I remember right, I think it had doodling and sweet 16 bars and mm -hmm. two or three other little uh, things in there that turned out to be very nice tunes. Well, we're going to go back, Ray, and reminisce a bit. This one is with the Ray Letts. How do they come about? The Raylets. Now, the Raylets, uh, uh, I'll tell you how it really happened. We, we were in, uh, in New York, the band and myself, and uh, uh, we were going to do a theater 
uh, date. Mm -hmm. So we left New York and went down to Philadelphia. And uh, uh, while we were there on this show, uh, uh, I heard this group uh, called the, I believe it was the, the Peachers or something like that. I, they were already formed at the time. Well, right. Well, yeah. they was, the, the three of them were together then, you know, and uh, they were singing behind Chuck Willis. Uh, right. Uh, what right. am I living for? Right. C.C. Right. right. Yeah. Well, that's right. Well, now, they were singing behind him. And so I asked them, I said, well, look, girls, I'm, I'm going to do a session in New York. Would you like to come up and, and help me, you know, do it? And they said yes. And, of course, when we did Swan the River Rock, the record you played, Lil Earlier, uh, they were uh, uh, the, the group. This was the group that was uh, on the Swan the River Rock at the time. And, of course, after that, uh, they, I asked them if they would like to work with me permanently, you know, mm -hmm. and so they said yes. So I said, well, the thing we'll have to do, if you're going to work with me, we're going to get one other girl and we're going to have to change your name. And they agreed to that, and ever since then I've had the, the Ray Lance. Mm -hmm. Well, this one features uh, Marjorie Hendricks. Right. Along with you, the right time. <laughs> the right time. Right. right time. That's, that's it. That's listen to it. Ray Charles and the Ray Letts, the right time. So Ray, at one point in your career, you uh, did some albums like Soul Meetin' with Ray Charles and Milt Jackson, mm -hmm. The Newport One, The Genius After Hours, right. and uh, Ray Charles presents David Newman. Mm -hmm. And you got one out called Ray's Moods right now. Huh? Right, right. This, this is our latest uh, uh, album now, which has a... Uh, well, I, I think it has a little of everything in it. Uh, th this is the reason why I, I called it Ray's Moods, because as you know, there are some happy tunes in there. You know, sort of funny, joking, like, 
and then there's some uh, a little rhythm and blues mm -hmm. in there, and, and of course, you know, there's even some country and western thrown in, you mm. see, on the side. How come you don't stay in one single channel? Uh, well, you, well, you know, I, I, I you I, want to expand. Well, right? I, I tell you what, uh -huh. I, the the, uh, the reason I don't is because I. I don't want to be labeled. In, in other words, uh, I like to think that if a promoter, say, wants to have a concert, say it's a jazz concert, I like to feel that I could fit in there. Mm -hmm. Or uh, say if he was having a, a thing where he was having, uh, the, you know, the, the, the blues played uh, uh, well, or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. uh, some people may call it rock and roll. I don't really care. Uh, then I would, I would like to feel that I'm able to fit in there just as well. And also, even to go a step further, I like to be able to uh, sort of throw in an extra type of song every now and then because, it, you know, it, it, I think it's good for the musicians, it's good for me, you know, so that, you, you know, you, you, we use a song like a country and western song or say a, a rhythm and blues song on a jazz uh, uh, session or right. say uh, if, you, if you did a jazz song on a rhythm and blues uh, concert, then of course this, this is what I call a change of pace, you know. It, it gives, it, and it, you know, it, 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 it gives one a, a chance to be able to, to get away from uh, uh, from the, the steady grind, you know. Say, Ray, I'm going to give our listeners a change of pace right now. This right. is one that knocks me out. It's called the Blues Waltz. All right. Three, four.
like that song. Yeah. Ray, uh, what instruments do you play? Uh, I play piano and, uh, and then of course, you know, the organ and the celeste, which is really all the same. And uh, um, a saxophone and clarinet, a uh, little trumpet and a little drums. Mm -hmm. Do you write uh, many of your own arrangements? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, when uh, uh, we had the, the small band, I used to write, the, oh, I, I'd say maybe 96% of the arrangements. Mm -hmm. Ray, in 1959, you had a giant. You cut this around February 18. It came out, it was called What I Say, and this was a two-sided record. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about this when uh, it first came out? Did you feel you might have a problem because of the time length? Well, I, I didn't really know. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 i tell you, the, the, the reason we did that uh, was because we, we uh, this song came about uh, one night. I, I was in this nightclub, and we had about five minutes, you know, left to do on the show. And, we, and I, had, uh, I had done all the, the, you know, the regular songs that everybody was familiar with. So I said, well, we still have five minutes, you know, to kill. So let's just play something. And we just started jamming, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with, 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 with this, uh, what I say. That's really how it came about. And something started to flow? And that was yeah, it, it, just started yeah. To, that, it just started to flow. And the people, uh, you know, the, the, there's always a good reaction. If you watch the way your public respond when you play a song, and uh, they started responding so well to this, and so we, we, we left it in. You know, each night we'd play that, and uh, finally somebody said, well, look, since the audience seems to like it so much, and of course they've never heard it except for you doing it in the club, so why not record it? And we went out and, and did it. Let's give it a whirl. Crazy. 1959, What I Say.
Tell me what I say, Ray Charles. Ray, I'm going to ask you a question. Going back to the early days, did you ever feel uh, the sting of prejudice at all uh, as far as club bookings and your relationships to uh, people in the early days? I don't think it was so much in the, in the clubs. Uh, uh, I, I, where we had problems is, uh, is when you, uh, you know, go into towns and have to find somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. In the earlier days, this was a problem uh, because uh, 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 the, the hotel conditions and the restaurant uh, facilities were, were very poor. Uh, however, I, I didn't run into too much uh, uh, prejudice as far as, you know, working in the clubs uh, was concerned. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, the, the, a club owner wants to make money, let's face it. And then, of course, if you go in that club and the people like what you're doing, then they don't give you too much trouble. I don't think it matters uh, what you are. As a matter of fact, I've heard an awful lot of uh, club owners uh, back in 1947 and 48, particularly down south, w w would say that they would rather hire a, a Negro entertainers because they felt they had a b had better rhythm, you know, uh -huh, better right. beat. You see, so it wasn't any problem uh, too much there. But, but uh, as I said, in in the in the hotel and and, and, uh, and restaurant facilities, it, w it was very rough. Well, the years have gone by, and uh, today you're billed as the world's most exciting musical personality. <laughs> Say, Ray, you. do you ever feel uncomfortable at times uh, being a worldwide celebrity? Uh, no, um, I, I have to tell you, I, I rather like it. It, it. It's, I think it's a marvelous thing uh, to have people love you all over the world. I mean, th this is, you know, I think this is uh, the ultimate goal, uh, I believe. Of uh, uh, one could not ask for any more than uh, that is, is to be, uh, to be liked and respected all over the world. Hey Ray, do you ever notice uh, any difference in uh, well, European audiences in contrast to the American crowd? Uh, yes, I, I, I think the difference is, is that uh, Europeans, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm, I would say almost every place except maybe in, 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 in America, uh, that the audience uh, seem to, when, when they come out to hear you, they, uh, they, they, if you, for instance, suppose we started to play I Got a Woman, well now that audience would applaud uh, right at the beginning of the song, you know, which would let you know that they know, uh, you know, what you, the, the, they're familiar with the song. Right. They identify but, right away. Right. Yeah. But after that, you can hear a pin drop all the way through that song. Now, of course, I've heard some, some entertainers say that bothers them. But to me, it doesn't bother me because I, it, I think that, that uh, this means that the, the people are really paying attention to what you're doing. And partner, let me tell you, you better be right. <laughs> Say, Ray, uh, the country and western field you ventured into around 1962 with your style, why did you do it? Uh, well, I, I, I had two feelings about that. First of all, I, I uh, personally like uh, country and western music, you know, I like to listen to people like Hank Snow and uh, Hank Williams and Grand Paul Jones and people like that. Uh, and besides that, the, the, um, uh, I felt that if you find thousands and thousands of people listening to a certain kind of music, it has to have some merit. It has to have uh, a great value, you know, because, you know, there, there are millions of people who like country and western music, you know. So therefore, I begin to think, well, if this is true, then why not take this music and, and not try to sing it like, say, a country and western uh, uh, star, mm -hmm. but sing it my way and, and see. I, I have to tell you, it was an experiment, though. I, well, we weren't sure how it was going to come out. I, I had faith that it would work out, and fortunately, I was right. It worked out. Let's go back to 1959. I'm moving on. Yeah. 
Take the throttle in hand Take me down to that southern land Keep moving on Keep moving on Keep rolling on Roll on, roll on You can ease my mind If you get me there on time Move on Moving on Peace of pilot Won't you please listen to me Cause I got a pretty woman in Tennessee Ray Charles, I'm moving on. Hank Snow wrote that. And uh, we're going to go into another one right now, Ray. Hank Williams' tune, the classic uh, Your Cheating Heart. All right. All right. Your cheating heart will make But sleep won't come The whole night through Your cheating heart Will tell on you Ray, a movie came out 
not too long ago called Blues for Lovers. Mm -hmm. And I was reading uh, the review in the recent uh, Playboy, and uh, you're an actor. Huh? <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, well, pretty good, Jim. I, I, you know, it's, uh, it's rather exciting. We, we had a, a glorious time trying to make this thing because, you know, uh, th this was the first movie I'd ever been in, and, and you know, to particularly, especially to act in it, you see. And <laughs> so, therefore, I was, I was, it was quite a challenge uh, to me, uh, and, and uh, so I can't, you know, I, I don't really know how, you know, how to really feel about it except good, you know, because, I, you know, the, the, it makes me feel good to be able to do something that I've, uh, I haven't been able to do before mm -hmm. and, and, and also uh, to have some good reports from the newspapers because, you know, some, they tell me that they can be very, very chilly, you know, but they were very sweet to me. And I was quite happy doing it. The only thing I didn't like about making the movie was to getting up, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's it. It's called Blues for Lovers. Right. Let's give it a plug. People around the world can check it out. Okay. Hey, Ray, uh, I'm going to toss around a few names. Just give me about uh, oh, a little comment about okay. each of uh, these artists. Let's start off with uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, it's tremendous talent. I, I don't think anybody can argue with that. Uh huh. Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley, in his own right, uh, I think is an excellent talent. How about uh, Nancy Wilson? Uh, Nancy Wilson, I think, is, is certainly, without any question, a, a great uh, uh, a, a star. Uh, and, and she's young, you know, and she's, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, she has, uh, her, I think, her career really is still be, uh, before her. Quincy? Quincy uh, Jones? Uh, if you don't mind me saying so, I think he's the greatest arranger around. I mean, of course, you have to understand, I'm a little prejudiced. He is my friend, but I, I sincerely believe, though, that there isn't any greater, let's put it that way. How about uh, Lou Rawls? I, I heard a, a couple of records uh, lately that he, he, he has done. Oh, and I, I remember uh, there was a song called Tobacco Road too, mm -hmm. that I heard him do. I, I like his style very much. I, 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 there's no doubt about it. You can tell it's Lou Rawls the minute you hear it. I would, I would love to hear a little more of him, though. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Ramsey Lewis. Well, Ramsey Lewis for an ins instrumental trio, I think he's absolutely superb. You know, he has this uh, uh, a beat going for him. You know, and and uh, and uh, it's paying off. Wes Montgomery. Yeah, uh, excellent guitarist. Uh, and and again, the, the, these people which you are naming now are stylists. Mm -hmm. You know, which 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 means that the minute you hear one note. You know right away it's uh, Wes Montgomery or it's Elvis Presley or Sinatra because they are stylists. They're not just to say an ordinary singer or an ordinary musician. They they have their own little uh, style going for them. So you you know I think this is great. A lot of times I uh, feature artists, uh, blues artists like uh, Jimmy Reed, uh -huh. Muddy Waters. Right. How do you feel about them? Well, I think that these people are sort of like the backbone of the blues. It's country you know. blues, right? Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just like you would say if you would take a, a what they call a hillbilly song, uh, which is, is, is like a further back than the country and western. The country and western is the modern name they've given it. And I think that the, the, your Jimmy Reeds and your Muddy Waters, the, these are the, the country blues in compared to what they call rhythm and blues, you see. Ray, we're going to swing out with I Got a Woman. But before we do, I'd like to uh, sum up your uh, triumphs in the words of uh, poet Alice Carey. All right. My soul is full of whispered song. My blindness is my sight. The shadows that I feared so long are full of life and light. Ray, bless you. Thank you for stopping oh, by. Oh, Jim, it was my pleasure, believe me. I, and I'm, I'm so happy you gave me this opportunity to, uh, to talk with the people all around the world, and I love you for it. Thank you so much, Jim. Let's rock out with uh, I Got a Woman. Why not? Well, I got a woman way over town that's good to me. Oh, yeah.
just for me. Oh yeah, she sings loving just for me. Yeah, she loves me so tenderly. I got a woman way over town that's good to me. Never grumbles or fusses, always treats me right. Never running in the streets and leaving me alone. She knows a woman's place is right there now in her home. I got a woman way over town that's good to me. Oh, oh yeah. She's all right. I don't know she's all right. She's all right. She's all right.